This video is brought to you by Mailgun. Everyone's talking about the M1 Ultra and everybody's talking about the $8,000 Mac Studio that you probably should not buy. Today, instead, we're gonna talk about the Mac Studio you should buy. Uh, that's anywhere from $1,800 to $2,000, depending on if you take advantage of education pricing. This, my friends, is the baseline 24 core M1 Max Mac Studio with 32 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of internal storage. And today I wanna to tell you why it's such a freaking steal. Okay, first up, let's talk about the processor in here, the M1 Max 24 core. Sure, there is a 32 core variant, but for what you're paying, you're getting 75% of the GPU power found in the best M1 Max, which is actually in my MacBook Pro. And that machine is completely overkill for now. Obviously, I want to keep it for a while so I configured it to the best it could be, minus the storage. I have four terabytes instead of eight. But the fact that this machine for, I mean, like half the cost, no, less than half the cost, maybe a third of the cost um, is at least 75% as powerful just blows my mind. Not only that, you get a really beefy aluminum cooler in here. So I don't know specifically, but I think the chip is gonna run a little cooler in here. Not to mention you get 32 gigs of RAM base, which is 16 more than what you're paying for with the um, baseline 14 inch MacBook Pro. So you're getting a better chip, double the RAM. I mean, I'll be at the same amount of storage, but with all the ports on the back here too, excuse me, I was actually holding it the right way. With all the ports here, you can plug in whatever drive you want. And sure, having internal storage is ideal, but if you're on a budget and you are really worried about performance, you can always buy a pretty decent external drive here and plug it into Thunderbolt. So the power that you're getting here, the built-in RAM, all of that is more than good enough for now for a 4K, pretty heavy 4K video editing workflow and even some GPU intensive workflows that involve 3D CAD and rendering or whatever Mac application you can take advantage of. Sure, it's not the Ultra, but I mean like Mark Kez needs the Ultra and he's shooting with like 8K, Helios, whatever the hell, red cameras he's shooting with. And even then, sometimes he doesn't need it. Um, so yeah, I mean, this thing is already overkill. Sure, maybe not as future proof as my MacBook Pro 16 inch, but considering that it's, you know what, I'm gonna do the math here on my Apple Watch because I suck at math. We're gonna go to the, um, we're gonna go to the calculator, wherever it is, here we go. This is 35% of the cost of my MacBook Pro. And yes, I did pay for extra RAM in that. And yes, it is more powerful. The fact that this is probably, you know, benchmarks wise, real world wise, 75% as good uh, says a lot. And with that said, before we continue real quick, I want to talk about today's video sponsor. Once again, this video is brought to you by Mailgun. With Mailgun, you can make use of APIs to manage email communication within your company and with your customers. Sending and tracking transactional and marketing messages is effortless too. And preventing fake signups as well as removing invalid email addresses has never been easier. You can also partner with email experts to improve your email deliverability in order to drive higher conversion rates. Mailgun's send time optimization capability is incredible as well, as it automatically finds the ideal time to send each and every individual on your email list mail based on when they are most likely to engage with what's in their inbox. Mailgun also serves companies like DHL, Wikipedia, Toast, Lyft, and Microsoft in order to help them solve complex communication problems. With Mailgun, it has never been easier to build a connected experience, and I wanna thank them for making today's video possible. Try out Mailgun today by using my link listed in the video description, mailgun.com slash Herman. And for the people that need benchmarks, this is my maxed out MacBook Pro connected to a studio display here, and in Geekbench, I can confirm the specs. M1 Max, 32 core, 64 gigs of RAM, all that good stuff. Uh, as for single core, multi-core scores, we get 1767 single core, 12,600-ish multi-core, and then with the GPU test or metal score, we get 70,300. So there's that. And then if we go over to the Mac Studio with the lesser, I guess, M1 Max here with 32 gigs of RAM, I can confirm the uh, specifications here. We get a single core score of 1,762 or 1,762, that's about the same. And then we get a multi-core score that's higher than the MacBook Pro in this instance. But I'm just gonna say that um, the CPU performance is the same because they both have 10 core CPUs. As for the metal score, we get a score of 59,200-ish. So that's about 85% as powerful as the 32 core GPU found in the better MacBook Pro over there. So I mean like guys, it's pretty close. I'm not gonna do a bunch of tests to sort of prove that, but looking at the raw Geekbench scores, as you can tell, this thing 
is hella capable for really a fraction of the cost. So yeah, once again, the fact that this costs 35 to 65% of an equally spec MacBook Pro, especially compared to the really high spec ones like I have, uh, yeah, it's a freaking steal. If you are starting a video editing business, you do YouTube, you're an enthusiast, you want something that's more powerful than the M1, something that can handle slow-mo, multiple streams of 4K, hell, even 8K, maybe a couple streams of that, um, this is more than good enough, and you get expansion with the external ports. I mean, obviously, I wish that this was modular. I wish that you could go in here and upgrade your storage and upgrade RAM and whatever. But you know, with Apple's SOCs, we kind of have to make that trade off. Everything is going to be soldered on, but with the performance we're getting, and especially per watt, you know, they were talking about, you know, energy efficiency here. I mean, yeah, you can't open this up and you're sort of at their mercy, but for what you're getting, uh, yeah, I, I can't complain too much. Not only that, this fits so well into pre-existing setups. I mean, unlike the MacBook Pro, which is sort of a standalone thing, you're paying an extra thousand dollars at the very least for the display on that, for the keyboard, for the chassis, for the speakers. Um, you're free to do whatever you want with this. So whatever monitors you have, as you can see here, I have a dual monitor setup behind me. Um, I can, you know, plug that in here with the HDMI port, with the Thunderbolt ports, just fine. I can attach even more monitors. So whatever setup you have, if you had a PC, if you had an Intel Mac, if you had a previous Mac mini, whatever you want, this will fit right in. And not only that, and I'll just show you right on camera, it fits so well. And you know what? I don't care about my cable management. Um, I, I really don't. It, it's, it just makes my life more complicated. I move hardware around, so that's just how I work. But as you can see here, it fits so nicely into this setup. I didn't have to move anything. It just is there. So yeah, uh, for the price and for the versatility that you get, and that's always sort of been the case with the Mac Mini, uh, the yeah, Mac Studio, the baseline one, makes so much sense. I totally condone getting one. Um, I would not make the same argument with the Mac Studio display, which is something I'm actually working on reviewing. I have it back here. Um, it really is fabulous. I really do love it. It's definitely not for everyone, though, if I can even turn it on, maybe. Um, hello, there we go. So yeah, I have it hooked up to my MacBook Pro, but yeah, um, the Mac Studio is going to be basically my spare computer and also a computer that I can let some of my coworkers or friends use if we're collaborating on some creative content. Um, this is a great computer if you run a media company and you want, you know, an employee or a contractor to be able to, you know, keep up to your standard of quality in terms of video editing and photo editing. You have enough RAM here, 32 gigs is plenty. I mean, for a computer for now, for a computer that you might use you know, as sort of an employee's computer or a backup computer or whatever. Um, this is great. Also, not to mention, you get the SD card reader on here, if I can even focus on that. Yeah, and it's probably overexposed, but this is sick. Apple has never done this before, so I'm really happy that they, uh, you know, implemented that. But yeah, this machine is sick. It's a great value. Obviously, you can spec it up to, you know, some crazy processor that you don't need if you want to. And if you are that person, great. If you need that power right now, the more power to you. But for the most of us, even for me, this machine is more than enough. And at $1,800 with education pricing or $2,000 if you don't choose to, you know, get that discount or if you can't, um, this thing is a freaking steal. So I'll leave a link. I'm obviously going to review this more or talk about this more in the future. But yeah, this is gonna serve as the backup machine and also secondary machine in my sort of YouTube content creation and hopefully in the near future media company workflow. Um, I hope this video helped you out. I hope you enjoyed. I'm gonna be talking about the studio display soon as well. Leave a like, you know, whatever you wanna do. Um, leave a comment. I'd love to hear what you think about the Mac Studio. And uh, check out my link to Mailgun uh, listed in the video description. And as always, I'm Noah, and I will catch you all in the next one.